Hello. Hello one and all. <laughs> one and all potters out there. Whoever you may be, welcome. Um, yeah, you saw me in the last clip we made up, didn't we, a salad and glaze. And I realised afterwards I actually hadn't given you the recipe. So I'm going to give you the recipe. Um, this is a rather high temperature celadon. It's good for sort of cone 9, 10. All right. Um, so uh, it's called PB. And I'll give you the, the, the list of materials and then I'll give you the weights. Okay, the list of materials is quartz, uh, china clay, or kaolin, potash felspar, whiting, talc, and iron oxide. All right? Now, in this recipe, I substituted quartz for flint. So I didn't have any quartz. So I've used flint instead. Um, right, so for, for quartz, you're going to need four pounds. For china clay or kaolin, you're going to need two pounds and 12 ounces. For felt, potash felspar, you're going to need three pounds and 14 ounces. For whiting, one pound 14 ounces. For talc, one pound two ounces. And iron oxide, four ounces. Okay? Um, you need to mix these ingredients and then you need to sieve them through a hundred mesh sieve. Ideally a hundred mesh. If you haven't got a hundred mesh, well an 80 mesh will probably do. Alright. So that's that. Um, okay, so I've got some things here on the table. Uh, I thought we could do just a few of these together and I'm just going to go through some of the steps that I use for, for glazing. Um, let me just uh, check the camera position to see that we are focused in the right, in the right area. Okay. Oh, hang on just one second. Um, now. Okay, just to, let's just let's just uh, talk a, a, a few things here on the table. It's very important to get yourself a bit organised when you're going to start glazing. All right, so clean off your table, get things on your wear boards. I hope you've all got wear boards. <laughs> okay, so seriously though, if you haven't got wear boards, do yourself the biggest favour. Go out and get some. Get, get some made up because you really do need wear balls. Um, so clean off your table, arrange your, your work on wear balls. Your glazed bucket, incidentally just before I go on to talk about that, that amount of glaze that I give you, I gave you, gives you like half a bucket of glaze, okay? So if you want a, a full bucket, you know you can double the quantity. So yeah, put your, your glazing bucket at a good height. Don't have your glazed bucket on the floor. Don't have your glazed bucket preferably up here on the on the workbench because it's it's not the ideal height to work from. So you want to get organized and get things at the right the right height. And this, for me, personally, this is about the right height, so the top of the bucket is kind of like the same height as the table. Um, okay, another thing you're going to need is a, a jug to pour and some sort of saucer to put the jug on. You're also going to need a small bucket with some clean water and a sponge. So, having said that, um, I'm just going to do demonstrate glazing here one or two GP bowls, 
and then I will go on to some of these other things that I've got there. But maybe I'll move the camera, um, let's see if I move it around this way a bit. Okay. Right, let's take a GP bowl, all right? Okay, simple bowl. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the glaze is well stirred. Okay, well you need to keep stirring your glaze along the way. Alright, so we're going to... In our jug, we're going to take some glaze. Alright. And we're going to pour in some glaze about that much. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to revolve, tip the glaze slightly to the side and then in the hand turn the, the bowl around like that. You see that? And then you want to take it to about a quarter of an inch below the level of the, the top. Pour out the excess. Now take your clean sponge. You see where we've just poured it out there. We, we, need to, we, need to, we need to clean that off, don't we? So we're going to give it a wipe. What we want to do is try and get a fairly good, clean, even line around there. Okay, let's, let's, do, let's do one more. Okay, so I'm going to pour in. I'm going to tip the glaze and then revolve the bowl in the hand. Now you get more confident at doing this as you go. All right. Pour back into the bucket the excess. Take your clean sponge and wipe off. Okay, now it's important to wipe off. For me, it's important for me to wipe these off because these bowls, as I've told you in the past, are going to they're going to sit. They're going to be fired. You see, face to face like that in the kiln. So obviously we don't want any glaze on the, on the lips here because if, if there is glaze there then the two pieces will stick together. Alright, so, so on and so forth. We go down the, we go down the line and you, until they're all done. And it, doesn't, it doesn't really take all that long. Now I've done already here a pouring bowl, and I've already done that. Now you see, having a lip, a pouring lip, uh, does add a little bit of a complication, but we are not daunted. <laughs> and I've got another one here which I'm going to do for you. This was one of the, one of the harder ones that came out of that bisque firing, if you remember. So, Again, we're going to give it a quick stir, stir, making sure that we go right down into the corner of the bucket to get all that sediment out. Take our GP mixing bowl, pour in the glaze. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm not going to, I'm not going to take it right to the lip, otherwise it will pour out. So we, turning the bowl in the hand, just allow the glaze to come up to about a quarter of an inch below the edge. Alright, and now all that's left to do is to pour it out from the lip back into the bucket, you see. Comme ça. 
Now, because we got the pouring lip on this one, I can really just pour it out through the lip. And there's, there's not really much else to do in the way of clear, cleaning off. Maybe just a little dribble there on, on the edge, which we're just going to, we're just going to clean away. All right, and that's it. Okay, so, now, what else can we say? See, there's always so much to say, isn't there? <laughs> this is it. Now, let's t take this. This is a, a faceted, basically it's just a cylinder that's being closed in at the top. All right, but it was thrown slightly thick and it was faceted. So we're going to take this form and, and glaze it in the bucket. So, you know, when you have pots that have got relief forms on the outside of the pieces, or maybe it's a, um, again, or some sort of fluted form like that, it, you know, you really, you, you need to give it a good dusting. So get your brush and give it a good, give it the works, you know. All right, so we were going to do this one, in fact, weren't we? So. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Okay, clean as a whistle. Incidentally, while you, while you are handling bisque ware, don't, before you're going to about to, to do your glazing, don't put on a load of hand cream on your hands. Because, you know, the hand cream is oily and you start touching this bisque ware with oily fingers, you'll find that the glaze will, will pull away from that from those areas, so no hand cream, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no hand cream before you start your glazing. So, all right, so let's just, I hope you've got enough light in this place. It always worries me with this other camera. The other camera is much better visually but the sound isn't so good. This camera is good with sound, but you know, you've got to have every light that you can muster. Let me just bring this a little bit closer here to the, to that bucket. Okay. I'm going to tie back this lock curtain here. Maybe give it a bit more light. How's that? Is that a bit brighter? Yeah, I think that's a bit brighter, isn't it? Okay, right. So, now this guy, you see, knowing how to glaze something is important, isn't it? And a lot of people, they don't know how to glaze something, so they can tend to make quite a mess of it because they're not very deft. I think that's the word, deft with their fingers they're not quite sure how they're going to hold on to it and how they what how the procedure you know the the one two three how it's all going to happen so you you want to know how you're going to glaze it before you take it and dip it in the glaze and then you think to yourself oh that wasn't so clever maybe i should have done it so and so you see think through the operation all right before you do it so you ask yourself the question, okay, so here is a pot, so how is it going to be glazed? All right, where do I want the glaze to be? Okay, now, in this case, I want the glaze to be on the inside of the pot, and I want it to completely cover the outside of the pot, but I don't want it to cover the foot. All right, now, you'll notice that I don't use wax. A lot of people will use wax to wax all the bottoms of their pots. And you really don't need to do that, folks. Um, 
I'm not saying that wax is not a good thing. Uh, it is a good thing, but you, you know, there's actually a better way. You don't have to use wax. If you're a little bit more clever in your thinking about how you glaze the thing in the first place, you can get away with not needing to use wax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in, all right? I'm going to swill it around and then I'm going to pour out. And then when I pour out, all right, there's two ways I can hold it. I can hold it like that because what I've got to do now is dip it, dip the outside in the bucket of glaze right the way up down to the bottom here, but without going, letting the glaze encroach over the bottom. I don't want that to happen. All right, because that, that means work, doesn't it? It means extra cleaning off. It means I've got to get the sponge and I've got to scrape it all off and I've got to do all that. I don't want to do that. So, um, again, so I can either hold it like that after I've glazed it in the inside and poured it out. That's one way of doing it. Or if my hand is big enough, I will grab it in that manner, okay, and dip it down into the glaze and bring it up, put it on the wear board, and then only my finger will have left a mark on the top, which I can then just dab it with my finger, and it should be okay. All right, so that's the, that's how we're gonna do it. Let's just, let's just see, yeah, we're looking good. So, again, we're gonna give the glaze a little stir. Okay, another consideration is, all right, if you're gonna dip that into the glaze, do you have enough depth of glaze in your bucket? Well, I can say that we do. Okay, here goes, so let's pour in now. And I'm gonna be a bit quick about this, all right? I'm gonna pour in, pour in about half full, give it a, like that. Let, now turn it and, and pour it at the same time. And then grab, I'm grabbing it. And straight down to the depth that I want. Whoops, I didn't take it quite deep enough. Give it a little wiggle like that. Now you can see the glaze is no glaze on the bottom, is there? And then put it down on, on your wear board. All right, if you get any kind of, you know, where you've left your, your finger mark on the top, all right, if you make sure you've got enough thickness of glaze there, then afterwards you can just give it a rub, all right? Okay, I'm just going to wash my hand. Let's do, let's do one more thing. Here we have a, a, a bowl uh, with a trimmed foot and the wooden spoon indentation in the side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go around these little relief areas here get any dust out now, let's bring the camera a little bit more in for this one there okay now then let's just now, different ways of doing this. I can pour in, swill it around, pour out, and then holding it by the foot, just go down into the glaze. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to grab it by the foot like I am, take it down into the glaze, double dip it, okay? Let it go right down, co cover over. I think what I'm gonna do with this one you see, you can take it the glaze only down so far and leave a ring here. That will leave the foot unglazed altogether. Or I can completely 
glaze over the whole foot, then all I've got to do is not glaze, is just wipe away just that bit there where my finger is, all right? But not inside there, that's left glazed. I think I'm going to double dip it actually. Okie dokie, right. Give a little stir. Now, down in and completely submerged it. Now I'm bringing it out and I'm going to, okay, there you are. You see, it's completely glazed all over, inside and out. Okay. Now all that remains is for me to put that back on, on, on the board. Just swing the camera around so you can see what I'm about. Okay. I'm just going to take it and put it there. All right. Any little finger marks there that haven't got quite a glaze where I want them, I can add it later and I'll clean the base later, all right? So, that's that. It's all interesting stuff, isn't it? Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the practical side of glazing that sometimes people get foxed in their thinking and they're not quite sure Ooh, how am I going to glaze this shape? And you have to be kind of decisive when you take that pot and you dip it in the glaze uh, and definite. But huh? <laughs> it's like everything else, it's, it's, it, it, it's practice, isn't it? So get practicing. <laughs> okay, this is Simon Leach saying, see you in the next clip. Keep practicing, take care. Bye bye. Did it, did it.